I've been using Tretinoin for a few years now, so I thought I'd make a video discussing some of the things I've experienced or learnt by incorporating it in my skincare routine. It's true, the retinization period can be a bit rough, but there's a few things that you can do to just experience it in a more gentle way. To back it up a bit, just to explain retinization, it's basically the period that your skin goes through at the start of your Tretinoin journey where your skin like acclimates to using it. Retinization can look and feel like dryness, irritation, tightness, and even things like redness, basically like a disrupted barrier. Generally, all of these side effects are temporary. The other thing to consider as part of the retinization process is that some people might experience a purge. This is where breakouts might appear in quicker succession than normal, and sometimes they're larger and more painful. It's important to remember that tretinoin is actually a treatment ingredient and that just comes with the risk of side effects. It kind of needs to be embraced by the process. It's not, it's not some run-of-the-mill skincare ingredient. Now, not everybody will experience side effects, so I don't think you need to go into it thinking that your skin will freak out. It's just good to keep in mind that it might. It's And it's also true that tretinoin is not right for everybody. Sometimes your skin just might not be a good candidate for it. The side effects just might be too extreme. As always, tretinoin is something to actually discuss with your doctor. So take everything I'm saying with a bit of a grain of salt just for general information coming from the perspective of my own experience. This is certainly not medical advice. I'm not trying to suggest you listen to me over your doctor. Just a few things that you might want to consider to maybe discuss with your doctor. So starting with tip one, don't give up. It can be tempting to give up on TRET as soon as the side effects start. Retinization can be an, can be an uncomfortable process, but as long as your side effects are tolerable, it's very well worth sticking with it and just sort of pushing through. Sometimes it can take two to three months for your skin to feel like it's come back to normal. I would say the worst of the retinization process typically occurs within the first few weeks, but don't be surprised if it lasts six weeks eight weeks, 12 weeks as well. Tip number two is that sometimes you actually do need to know when to give up. Tretinoin can be very strong and it therefore maybe isn't suited to everyone. If your skin gets to the point where it's just truly painful and it's not manageable, then it's worth stopping and discussing the next best option with your doctor. Now, I'm not talking about minor things, like if you notice a little bit of dryness, a bit of dehydration, your skin is a little bit more red than normal, that's all part of it. But just if the side effects are extreme, then it might be worth just exploring something else. Tip number three is don't feel too confident too quickly. What I mean by that is that the first few days or even the first week of tretinoin, and you might've been applying it every day, every third day, and you feel like your skin is fine, you're tolerating it well, there's no side effects. But what can happen is that the side effects might be delayed. So I would suggest going into it assuming you'll experience some degree of retinization and then being pleasantly surprised rather than overdoing it because you think your skin is handling it and then really freaking out a week later. Tip number four is that skin cycling is a social media invention. It's actually not the goal. Unless directed differently by your doctor, tretinoin is designed for fairly regular use. Especially in the first few months, you don't want to get into this habit of using it once a week because it'll take you so long to fully retinize and acclimate. Having said that, it is normal to start slowly at the very beginning, but you kind of want to try and increase your tolerance to TRET as soon as you can. After you've been using TRET for a while and you feel like you've reached a level where you're happy with the results, then some people might choose to drop down into a maintenance phase. But especially if you're using this as a treatment product for like acne or something like that, using it once a week is probably not going to be enough. I know this is kind of the opposite advice from a lot of social media personalities where many of them are like, I use it once a week, twice a week, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of those people are using lasers and needling and other professional skin treatments combined with TRET. So their experience doesn't actually relate to how you'll probably be using it unless you also go get an abundance of other treatments. If TRET is your focus, then it should be treated as such and it should be used regularly. Tip number five is to embrace a simple routine, at least at the start. All other skincare actives should be stopped. So definitely no acids, even vitamin C, really anything. So you're just focusing on hydration, moisturization, and nourishment. That's truly all that matters. And I'll discuss a little bit more about this later in the video. Tip number six is that there are actually different types of tretinoin, not just different strengths. I discussed this in a recent video not that long ago, so I'll link that below. But the actual vehicle that tret comes in, so the type 
type of formula actually makes a big difference as to how tretinoin will be experienced. In my opinion, tretinoin microgel is the way to go and especially Ltrino if you can get it. Tip number seven is to have realistic expectation. Tretinoin is awesome. For some people it's a miracle, but for others it's good, but not a miracle. And it will definitely take several months before you begin to see results. I would say it was like at least six months before I felt like the whole retinization process was even worth the effort. And even after using TREP for a while at a certain point, I felt like I needed to still reintroduce acids and other skincare ingredients. So TREP did a lot to fix a lot of the main overarching problems I had with my skin, but just the final little finishing touches to make me really satisfied with the results, I ended up needing to still rely on like a harmony or symphony of ingredients. Having said that, that's just my experience. I know some people who just use TRET and they're absolutely blown away with their results and they have the smoothest, nicest skin ever. That's just going to be like a your results will vary kind of thing. One thing that I noticed that I especially love about TRET is that I feel like it really improved the resilience of my skin. So it just made my skin tolerate things better and I definitely wasn't as sensitive as I was before. Tip number eight is that other retinoids probably aren't as good. I specifically mean cosmetic retinoids. There is a lot of debate about this online and everybody wants to talk about the retinoid pathway and how retin and how retinol converts to retinaldehyde, which converts to the active form of vitamin A, blah, blah, blah. Tretinoin is the active form. I don't really want to get into an argument of a pathway when we have access to the active form. So like that doesn't really make sense to me. The Like especially if you're trying to treat acne or if you have more chronic skin conditions, I think you really need like a drug form like tretinoin. If your skincare concerns aren't that extreme and you're happy with like a slow and steady wins the race approach, then that's where cosmetic retinoids are great. Or if you just don't want to deal with side effects, also cosmetic retinoids are great for that. Even access is an issue, so TRET has a lot of barriers. But assuming you don't have a few of these barriers, then it's definitely worth exploring over cosmetic options, especially for chronic skin conditions. The other thing that I don't think people speak about enough is that we don't actually have a lot of information about the stability of cosmetic retinoids. Yes, we talk about the retinoid pathway, as I said, but that's based on a theoretical action. The first hurdle is, is a formula even good enough? Is the vitamin A, is the retinol actually stable in the formula? Is the formula formulated well enough to actually be delivered into the skin for this whole pathway to occur? And then how effectively is that conversion from retinol to tretinoin actually happening in your skin? For me, there are too many questions with that. And with TRET, I just really wanted to know that it was working in my skin without question. And also there's just the factor of like packaging stability. Like is the retinol even alive in the product when you get it? This stuff actually isn't regulated. So there are safety regulations around like ensuring there's no microbial contamination, but nothing to do with efficacy for cosmetic retinoid. Tip number nine is that adapalene is OTC in a lot of countries. So kind of related to the previous point about not loving cosmetic retinoids versus tretinoin. Adapalene is an exception. So that is an OTC product in Australia and in the US. I think it's still prescription in most other countries, but let me know where you live and whether or not tretinoin or adapalene are available over the counter. So that's great news because adapalene is like right up there with tread. It's probably easier to tolerate. From what I understand, adapalene is still recommended mainly for acne, but it does seem to have a lot of good anti-aging potential as well. So everything I said about formula stability and delivery into the skin doesn't apply for adapalene because it's actually a drug product. Tip number 10 is that slugging is your friend. I found slugging to be extremely helpful when dealing with the side effects of tretinoin. And if you don't already know, slugging is basically where you apply like a light ointment on top of your moisturizer at night, just in a very thin layer. It's almost like creating more of a seal or like a barrier on the skin. Something like Aquaphor is perfect, though I personally use Build Skincare Bee Balm these days. Now, some people prefer not slugging on the actual same nights that they're using tretinoin because they feel like it kind of drives the product in further. 
that was not my experience with it. I was able to slug on my tret nights and I found that it actually helped with side effects. But you might find that it works better where you don't slug on your tretinol and application nights, but you just slug on all of your off nights. Beyond the tips that I've noted, I also wanted to discuss two of the main ways to actually introduce tretinol into your routine at the very start. Hopefully one of these protocols will help minimize some of the side effects. The first way is the buffering method, sometimes known as the sandwich method or the pizza method. I'm not even sure who came up with these names. I think I first heard them from Dr. Ronella Hirsch. The sandwich method is probably the most common, I would say, and it involves cleansing your skin, applying a layer of moisturizer, then a layer of tret, and then another layer of moisturizer. So basically sandwiching the tretinoin. The pizza method is similar. It's just that you skip that second layer of moisturizer. So you'd cleanse your skin, apply a layer of moisturizer, then finish off with tret. And it's like a pizza topping. <laughs> I ended up preferring the pizza method over the sandwich method because I because I often do my evening skincare routine fairly early in the night. And then I'd let that sit for a few hours. And then right before bed, I'd come back and then finish off with a slugging balm. Eventually you will be able to skip this buffering process. This is maybe something to implement for the first few weeks. The second way to introduce tretinoin is through the wash-off method. This involves short contact therapy. The wash-off method involves applying tretinoin on the skin for five minutes at night, then washing it off, kind of like a mask. The next night, you'll then leave it on for 10 minutes, then wash off, then 30 minutes, then one hour, then one and a half hours, finishing off with two hours. The goal is to level up the time each night so you get a sense of like the tolerance threshold tretinoin in your skin and a way of like introducing it in short bursts rather than shocking your skin completely. The goal is by the end of that first week that you'll be able to leave it on overnight. However, if you start experiencing a negative skin reaction during those initial periods, then you'll kind of know that your tretinoin threshold isn't as high and you might then need to discuss with your doctor an alternative approach or then maybe moving on to the pizza or sandwich method. It might be a case where then you need to reevaluate strengths or even the type of retinoid. To quickly touch on my personal routine at the start of using TRET, it was just very simple. And considering I like to use a bunch of products, my TRET routine at the start was very basic, consisting of very few products. At the very, very start in the nighttime, I would double cleanse, then follow the sandwich method. So a layer of moisturizer, then TRET, then another layer of moisturizer. And I would specifically use the Dr. Sam Bunting Flawless Moisturizer. I think this is just a really great, well-rounded product that hits a lot of the key skincare ingredients just to help with barrier health while using TREP. Not long after that, I ended up switching to the pizza method and then slugging after. So that ended up just working out better for my skin. I really think slugging helped a lot. In the morning, I'd cleanse, apply a layer or two of the Hadalabo Premium Lotion. This was really a lifesaver for like peeling and dehydration. Then I'd finish off with Dr. Sam's again and apply SPF. These days I mainly use Build Skincare B Cream with B Balm as like my tretinoin routine, but I still think Dr. Sam makes really awesome products. And then after a few months, I felt comfortable enough to introduce some other actives in my routine. Now I did also have on hand a squalane oil that I'd use every now and then just to help flatten out some of the peeling bits. So I think it's important not to exfoliate too much when you're on TRET and you want to try hydration or nourishment first. Some doctors will actually still suggest and prescribe an acid with TRET to help with to help slough off some of the dead skin that starts to accumulate. But I think that's really something that you should discuss with your doctor pending your tolerance. One last tip is that dry skin is your friend. What I mean by this is that after cleansing, I found it really helpful to wait 15 to 30 minutes for my skin to be bone dry before applying TREP. I think it's kind of well known out there that like a damp skin just means things will permeate more easily and you kind of don't want to encourage that at the start of using TREP. Again, after a few months when my skin was used to it, I was able to not think about it this much and I'd just use TREP a little bit like a regular skin serum and it would be totally fine. There is so much nuance around tretinoin and that is very much a personal experience. But I guess I hope some of these tips, you know, will be helpful. I know a lot of them have been around for years now, so you've probably heard them. But hopefully a few of them were new and you hadn't considered them before. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.